Ladies and gentlemen, for more than 40 years, our guest today has been an inspiration, a spiritual mentor, and a master healer for the global human family. She's a comedic priestess. She is a yoga teacher. She is a natural healer and lay midwife. Her clients include Erica Badu, Vanessa Williams, and Stevie Wonder, to name a very few. And she is also the author of several books, including Sacred Woman. She's also been the co-director of the Heal Thyself Natural Living Center, which has operated for over 20 years in Brooklyn. She's been a lecturer or a writer for Essence Magazine, NASA, the National Coalition of 100 Black Women, and at colleges and universities throughout the United States of America and the world. There's absolutely no introduction that can give honor to her contributions to our people. So let me just roll out the red, the black, and the green carpet for our queen mother, Queen of Four. Queen of Four, welcome to United Black America Radio. How are you? Wow, I really love that. (laughs) (laughs) Green carpet. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's right. (laughs) Well, we appreciate you for spending some time with us today. Um, And, you know, I always like to start in the beginning. You've been engaged in the work of healing our people for more than four decades, according to our research. Um, I I really want to get a feel for how you got started. What inspired you? Who inspired you on this path? Mm, Well, as soon as you ask me, um, I think about um, Dr. Johnny Moore, master herbalist. Mm. At that time, he's now an ancestor for over uh, 50 years. And he's a, he's a master herbalist, a natural healer. And at the time that I met him, I was uh, 16 years old, and I was seeking to get well. I was extremely sick and was getting sicker. I was on medication for my chronic asthma and my eczema. I have also had chronic PMS, um, headaches, arthritis. I was like an old woman in a young body. <laughs> And so I was filled with diseases. So I was fine. I was seeking a way out, and I was invited to come on a healing retreat. And that was my first retreat, and it changed my life forever. I remember I left my medication behind. I knew there was a way. I didn't know my way out, and I didn't know how I was going to get well, but I just was following my, my, my soul. And when I got off the bus of this retreat, the grass, the trees, all nature was like, welcome, and all the, the skin was <laughs> itching, I'm breathing. And I was detoxing. That's what nature was doing to me. And I wasn't even aware that I was happening. I just thought I was in the danger zone. And then I heard an inner voice for the first time give me direction and gave me my first formula from the kitchen. I was in the lobby. It was safe in the kitchen as well. I put my bags down. I'm wheezing. I'm scratching. I'm like a junkie. And um, I was told, eat great fruits, lemons, and oranges. And I did for that day. And I drink premium water. But the first person I heard, it was like, it was like a bell went in my head. He said that the healing is in the plant. That's right. Dr. Johnny Moore said. And um, he started talking about various testimonies of women that were able to heal. Many of the clients, he said women were infertile and um, they had womb issues. And it just shocked me into awakening. So that whole day, there were different healers talking. I didn't hear anyone else. I was so in my own uh, stress level. That night, I set up in front of a fireplace and I, I couldn't lay down. If you're chronic asthmatic, if you lay down, your lungs would collapse. Mm. So I propped up some pillows. The fire was going all night. Now, I didn't know if that was the healing that was taking place. I had a whole day of fasting on citrus juices that breaks up mucus and water. And then I'm in front of a fireplace. And then I learned that fire, that heat, through many sweat lodges I took people on, that that was part of the healing detox. When I woke up that morning, waste started coming out of my nose, my mouth, my eyes for about an hour. And as it ended, the waste was draining out of me. That was my junk food, my processed food, my toxic state, mm. my fears, my headaches. Everything was coming out. I wasn't aware that it was ha- that was happening. But as I went and I started reflecting, as I was growing deep in this healing, I realized that that was the beginning of everything for me. And then I remember all of a sudden I was hearing about lifestyle, you know, uh, massage therapy, yoga, meditation, mm-hmm. vegetarian lifestyle, colonic irrigation, all of the things that I live now and I teach now. And I picked up one book to change my life, and that was Dick Gregory Cook with Mother Nature. I went home with that book. What was the name of that book one more time? Dick Dick Gregory Cooking with Mother Nature. Mm. Dee Greg became a vegetarian um, through uh, Dr. Alvinia Fulton, who I met in Chicago. She was his teacher. She also was Muhammad Ali's uh, 
uh, teacher, oh, you know, in you? wellness. <laughs> yeah, so I, I seeked her out when I went to Chicago each time, and she just, she was so warm and so loving and so supportive as I was seeking myself. But in that process, I took that book home, and I started to fast. Mm. And I had I was going through detox on every level, and I wasn't I didn't have anyone to help me, but I got through. And in two 21 day cycles, I was able to get rid of all the issues that I had: my PMS, my five my, not a five word, but my uh, my PMS, my pain in my arm, my um, headaches, the asthma, the allergies. It was a miracle because the doctor told my mother that I should live in a glass house. And at that time, I was an artist. <laughs> And I wanted to sing and I wanted to dance. I had a new right. group. I was, I, was, I, I was, I performed at Metropolitan Opera House and dance. I was very much about being a healer. But with a sick body, I could do but so much. So that was my beginning. That's how it all started for me. And I've been still excited about the path from that point to now. From 16 to 61, I'm still excited about the healing. I, I love the story and how it came about, you know, in all the years that um, you've been engaged in healing, because I know, um, you know, it's, it, it becomes addictive once you start something that's so, that helps so many people. Mm. Well, so. it was more that if I went back to the old ways of living, the toxic yeah. lifestyle, I would, I would return back to that sick state and I knew it. And, yes. and in my readings, it would show that, you know, we do have power to change. And if we don't make the life change, most people don't really connect the life change that it requires. Mm. They just want to get rid of the, the symptoms and go back to the old habits. That's right. But I knew that I, it, for me, it was the pathway of no return. I couldn't go back. I could only go forward. And so as I was going forward, I would get clearer, more enlightenment, different, so many things that began to happen. Some things I was engaged. I was about to be engaged. I thought I was young, mm. but then I ended that relationship because I was cleansed. I was I came on higher ground. So my life changed. Everything shifted for me. What I, my work, the kind of work that I went into, which is holistic health, right. that changed. So everything begins to shift when you start to cleanse and detox your life. So it's not about getting rid of a, a, a high blood pressure or disease. It's really about cleaning up your whole life and getting in tune because we carry all the stuff from our families and. Um, you know, our, our families are filled with diabetes and cancer and high blood pressure and obesity and all. So it's in our blood. That's so right. if we clean up, we have to clean up for the rest of our lives and stay clean. Mm. Now, as, as you're talking about this, I'm thinking we as black men and women, we experience the highest of all the worst physical and emotional statistics yeah. and the lowest of all the best. Why is that? Is this our fault? Are external forces at play? Is this a combination of both? What circumstances exist that require that we have to go through so much healing and so much uh, uh, detoxification? Well, most people who have come here, they get on a boat, they get on a plane, they get on a bus. You know, they come here and that. They come as family. They come with their culture. They come with, um, you know, their path. They come with their doctrine, spiritual doctrine. They come with their suitcase of what makes them be who they are as a people. Well, when you're ripped from your mother's breast, and your father's heart and arms, and then you're left out for 400 years um, to slave mm. and be raped mm. and abused and in every way possible, language stolen, culture stolen, medicine stolen, when everything has been ripped from you and you are beaten into some, some, some mission, which really just is a, a deeper pain, right. how, do you, how do you recover? How do you overcome this? You know, and, and it's not like we went through therapy as a people. What many of us have that is became culturally conscious, start to follow the path of our ancient ancestors to get back to ourselves, to repair, to recover. But for the most part, we're wounded. And now we continue with the slave diet. These are the scraps, you know, we you know, the, the have the entrails of the of the pig and call that a delicacy, That's you know. Right. It's it's an issue. So we're carrying on the 40 years of chattel slavery, and we continue into our day-to-day -day lifestyle. I mean, I just saw an this image. And I'm not putting it down one way or the other because I'm, you know, I'm being recorded. But it's an image of the M, the large M. And it's really stating that, you know, you have very powerful people with in front of this symbol mm. at fast food, you know, the king of fast food. Um, the queen of fast food, and, and it really makes it look like a cultural experience. Like this is a good thing. 
that this is supporting us and this is right. they come and help us with our college funding and, and with the churches and right. you know and, and right. provides our need and we just go down the river and with that dead process food I, I remember uh, working with uh, Bob Law and he did some research and he found that there's six times more fast food um, places in uh, the African American community than any other community. That's right. And and there's less and there's more and it's more like corner stores uh, rather than fruit markets in our community. And there's more um, alcohol places in our community. Mm. So it's a, it's not it's all around us. It, it's infested, but we still can heal. We still can overcome it. But it's very deeply. And and family. This is oh my gosh. This is the season. We're gonna go into the season. It's gonna be gonna be dietarily slaughtered. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Right. Yeah. And then what happens, well, it's like a drug. You know, if you're on cigarettes and you stop smoking, if you have one cigarette, you're back at it again. If you have one drink and you stop drinking and you, and you go back to having another drink, you're back at it again. So you got one piece of, one piece of, uh, of turkey that has been injected with so much, it's like so much mm. uh, such, uh, medication and so much steroids and so much hormones so you're locked into that chemical. That chemical is now in the body, and it's causing heart palpitations. It's causing emergencies. Um, this is when the emergency wards really open up and expand. The psychiatric wards open and expand. The the prisons because the food is creating our consciousness. Mm. The food is the end result of our consciousness, our feelings, our sadness, our emptiness, and we're trying to fill ourselves up with something that is poisoning us to death. And it's um, directly linking us to the diabetic condition, the high blood pressure, right. the, the um, obesity, the violence in the home. We are what we eat, as well as what we think and what we feel and what we look at, the television, violence. It, it's so much being saturated to our psyche. So mm. we have to be real powerful to overcome it. And I know we can. You just have to wake up. And that's not always easy to wake up, but this is that time. You go to, it's my that's son, right. Supernova, saw um, Hip Hop Medicine Man, says, purify or die. And I said, wow, so you got to be that hardcore? <laughs> you got to be that hard on it? But it's real. You know, if you don't clean up, then your body starts to leave you in parts and pieces. You know, limb by limb, your mm. body will start dying. You know, I know that with women. One ovary dies this year. The next, a fallopian tube gets blocked up, can't conceive. It's just one breast removed. Men, impotency. We just mm. start to die while living because we're, we're addicted and we're going to break that cycle. We start to die while we are living because we're addicted. Mm -hmm. Well said. Well mm -hmm. said. And as you're speaking, I'm, I'm starting to think uh, about how slave rations mm -hmm. became soul food, so to speak. The entrails sure. of pigs and all of the things that were left over that at one time yeah. we detested. Now those things are considered soul food. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so they, you know, it's it's in you know, it's Big Mama's cooking. I mean, it's for soul food. They show, they show, and you know, food represents community. That's right. It represents love. So if you are bounded and and binded to something that is destructive, as called love, that's a love hate relationship. Mm. Um, you know, you smell it. You you look for the smell, the taste, the texture of something that's destroying you. And that is what's helping to shape our sick relationships. That's right. So if your mother is loving you, but she's giving you this food, then it's not love. And so we fill up the hospitals and the mental wards and so on as a result of this dead, lifeless, microwave, fast, junk food, canned, lifeless energy. Mm -hmm. And expect it mm -hmm. to have, no, have wellness. It's not going to happen. You know, it doesn't equate to wellness, right. the, what we're taking this one. Mm -hmm. You know, I, in my book, I wrote a book um, called City of Wellness, and in it I have, I, I, want, I responded to that, and it's called the International Soul Food Kitchen. Mm. And so I, I took recipes, I took the soul food recipes, my family's from Louisiana, um, so it was easy to pick that up, and I just doctored them up and made them holistic. I took the Southern Soul, the Caribbean Soul Food, and doctored some of those recipes, my family gave those to me, and I was able to work with them. And then I, I doctored up, um, uh, I was given some food from Nigeria and from mm -hmm. Ghana, and then I worked on that as well. And I said, well, if you just, if you have food, food you don't have okra, your stomach's your your going to be bloated like a rock. Yes, and when your colon is bloated like a rock, you get, you contract all types of disease. And forget men, they get prostate blockage early on by the time they're 35, 40. Right. They're in post. 
So it is it's, it's having an impact, an impact. So that that international soul food kitchen, people want to they want to taste and smell the aroma. They want the same food, but if you could take out the fat back and you could take out the sugar, the sugar is um, a few molecules of crack and cocaine, and that's laced everywhere. With the candy yams, um, right. you'll be you'll have, you'll have a, a heart attack. Uh, you'll have a stress attack. You'll start arguing at the dinner table just having some candy yams passing by you. And then if you have, and then if you have another platter of the ham, and then the gravy, uh, all of that. Then you're having uh, heart palpitation. Mm. And and so mm. the food is really having. And then you, if you get uh, something creamy, and you have the eggs or the milk for your sweet potatoes, then you're going to have a bad discharge of women and or constipation or gas. So by the time everybody finished that dinner, that Thanksgiving, that Christmas dinner, they are so bounded up, they're so stressed out, they're so toxic and sick. All they can do is go lay down. Now you go lay down after that food, you're having a heart attack. That's you're right. Having a stroke. And it's like one thing leads into the next oh, until the we itis. decide. Yeah, yes, all that. <laughs> it, just, it just takes all your energy just to have a meal. That's and right. food is supposed to give you energy, not take away your energy. This is specifically why I wanted to have you on this time of year, because we're really going into a critical period where people are going to be ingesting all sorts of very dangerous foods, quote unquote. And I use the term loosely for this conversation. And at the same time, once they're done destroying themselves, they want to move into the new year and create resolutions and promise themselves they're never going to do that again. But what they don't have is a disciplined regimen for cleansing and maintaining that lifestyle. Now, in doing research for this interview, I came across a concept of yours called the circle of wellness. Now, what is the mm -hmm. circle of wellness and uh, what is the importance and practice of cleansing besides the obvious? Mm -hmm. uh, we're always in circles. Mm -hmm. um, so it depends on what circle you're in. Now, what do you and mean so when you I, say we're I, always in circles? Well, well, you have a family. That's a family circle. Okay. Um, if it's healthy or unhealthy, it's still in your family circle. You have a you have friends in circles. So mm -hmm. if it's productive or non-productive, that's your circle. Um, if you have if you're a businessman and you want to a woman want to expand your business, become an entrepreneur, you go into a circle. You guys start to choose the circle with full consciousness. Mm -hmm. But you're going into a circle to grow, to heal, to get knowledge, to expand, to attract to multiply your economic, so you, you choose your circle. And so when I speak of the circle of wellness, any circle that can build you up, fortify you, enhance your life, help you to grow, that's a healthy, vibrant circle. You want to examine your circle and put yourself in an atmosphere of like mind spirit for the highest, for your highest as well as your highest good. Mm -hmm. I have been developing circles, holistically speaking, uh, and I've been uh, gathering families into circles. And because of one can't heal isolated, you can last for a minute, and then as soon as the food comes on the table, you're gone, you're done. <laughs> so if you don't bring a husband, wife, daughter, son onto the path as you being a living example, you start with your inner circle. And that inner circle of oneness gathers your liver, your kidneys, your gallbladder, your spleen together. Mm. Rather than losing your organs as you get older or they become debilitated, you get inside yourself and you begin to heal yourself internally. And so your blood is, is clean and so the, the blood, high blood pressure is not there. Mm. Your bones are nourished so you don't have arthritis, aches, and pain. So you're in a circle. Your heart is healthy. Your eyes are cleared out. So you don't have heart congestion. Your brain is, is nourished with life-giving foods and green juices and herbs. So your mind, you don't go into Alzheimer's as you get older. So mm. oh, your womb is being fed with fresh berries and fresh greens. And so women don't have to grow those tumors. And so in her hen circle, your inner circle is stronger. And you got to get your inner circle strong enough to attract a, other circles that reflect your health and your vitality and your greatness. When we find ourselves isolated is when we lose. We, 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 we're not able to grow. We're not able to build. And so we have the circle is what's going to secure us. And I, when I teach in a circle, everyone becomes one automatically. Mm -hmm. They look at each other as leader and follower. In a circle, I when I'm in a circle, 
I, and I've always played the circle no matter what if I'm presenting. I'll move the chairs in the room in a minute because that's my salvation. I can't even teach without coming to a circle. That's Either right. I got to be in the circle, I got to come in the middle of the room if the chairs don't move and create a circle. Mm. <laughs> it has to happen because the heart opens up. And and when we're not in circle, it's it's a cultural dynamic of healing. The circle also represents the light. The mm. circle represents the sunlight. It represents Ra and from a, a comedic perspective. So with the sun, the sun goes into the plants, for example, and gives photosynthesis, gives us nourishment. So That's the right. green is literally taking liquid sun, liquid gold. And when we take that liquid sun inside of us, we become vibrant. We get rid of our cancers, our high blood pressure, our, 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 our disconnect. We automatically come into divine connection when we take in the sun. So when you're in a circle, that's what you're creating. You're creating sunlight. You're mm. creating enlightenment. You're creating electricity. You're creating connectivity. Mm. And in that, what do you need? The circle can provide. Someone in the circle has what you need. That's why you're in that circle. That's right. And as you begin to open yourself up to your inner circle and that circle that you created, those people as your creation, then you could just ask, this is what I need. What do you need? And it's, it's like we can exchange now. And we can, it's not all going to come from finance. It's going to come from creativity. Mm-hmm. What do you have? What do I have? What, what lessons do you have? What information? What knowledge? With, you know, and we begin to pool our resources. And in that pooling our resources, we become revitalized people, not wounded, not broken, not mistrusting, mm-hmm. not backstabbing, not all of that. That means that we have not been in harmony. We have not been in a circle. So no matter what the circle is, I'm always going to say, well, let's detox. Mm. Because if you can get on a detox, then the circle will be stronger. The circle will heal more. The circle will be able to grow. And you may come in and out of circles. I mean, I've been in circles all my I've been conscious of being in circles. That's right. As I've reflected and worked work on the book. But it's a circle that actually heals the heart and unifies us and gives respect. We begin to respect each other more when we're in circles. So the leader is you and the follower is you. We're all learning constantly. So, you know, so that's a part of the power of circling. And in the circle, every every round goes higher and higher. It's the, the circles begin to broaden. So if an individual comes to see me, I'll do a consultation. I'll put them on the detox. And they, as they're even hearing the consultation, they start thinking about their circle. They start saying, you know, my husband, my wife, they need this. Oh, that's, well, that's my child. They start bringing them in the circle as I'm talking to them about what they need to do automatically. Right. That's a natural progression. So now they now, I said, so you represent the family circle. So as you are healing and the family seeing you as a living example, then they start to gravitate to what you're doing, what you're eating, because you have more light, you have more energy, you have more clarity, you have more stamina, you have more peaceful, and they are witnessing this in a matter of a few weeks, and That's sometimes right. days, and they'll start to engage, and then you give them a green juice, you'll give them some berries, you'll give them some fresh fruit, you'll give them some salad, and now the, the family starts to heal, and then the house, becomes, the house then becomes blessed as a healing center. Now you have a circle in your home where you're conscious that every room in that house is dedicated to wellness. So now you're not going outside the circle to heal. You are healing in the circle, in the home, with the family. So now you've got a family of healers. And you've got uh, your clinic, your hospitals in the house. Um, the um, Surgeon General, she, uh, I was in a chance to be in a room with her, and she um, said that she, her quote, her quote, you can look it up, mm-hmm. um, is that you don't, Healing is not just in the hospital and the clinic. Healing is also in your house, yes, in your right. home, and your, and your spiritual house. So it, it's just wonderful that that consciousness came into being. She, said, she actually said out loud that you can heal from inside your circle. That's right. And, you know, you, you, save, you save yourself your organs. You save yourself your mind. You feel empowered. The household is not, oh, my mother is, is an example of the circle. She just... Well, she turned 90 last. She'll be 91 in a, um, by next month. 60 days, 90 days ago, she, she felt completely sick. I've been helping her. I've been her caretaker since she was 65. Mm. And I just bring her right into my life. You know, like people caretakers are always just stressed out and upset and That's hurting right. and wounded. But because if they're not healing, it, it's hard to be a caretaker if you're sick. 
If you're sick, you can't take anybody, and it just wears you down further. You make you, people caretakers get angry. Sometimes they get abusive to elderly mm-hmm. because they're so sick and stressed out. So in order to be a real caretaker, you have to take real care of yourself. Where health care is actually self care. So if in my mother when she, when that happens, you know my my family like okay, um, if she has thirty days. If they don't see that she's functioning, she was in the hall. She's in the hospital. She went to the older old home, old age home, and they were feeding her. And I thought, oh my God, she she does. And then, and then when she finally got home, she whispered to me because she couldn't hardly talk. She said, "You think I'll ever walk again?" I said, "If you want to, let's do it." So. Myself, my mm-hmm. son, we got together. We would exercise her, walk her. She couldn't move. She couldn't do pain. She went to Alzheimer's. She was done. You know, when she hit Alzheimer's, they say it's over. But she went to Alzheimer's too. Now she's taking her bills and she's reading her book. <laughs> and yeah, she's so going to she, she experienced a reversal. Complete and absolute. And this is, how, this is, this is what we can do in family that we come in circles. We don't have to have old age homes. We don't have to have our families on drugs and alcohol if we circle around them and we know what to do. And so That's you right. can detox someone off of their drugs. You can detox your youth and bring them into your fold by just learning the principles of nature. No one wants to be drugged out. No one wants to be sick. But you have to be willing as the, the leader of the circle initially. If initially, you got to have a leader. Somebody got to get it started in the circle. That's right. And when they get it started, then the family starts. You give them a juice, you give them a food, you give them a, and you, you feed them into wellness. You, they, you drink them into wellness. The next thing you know, my, my, like my mother's taking her green juice every day. She's taking her green life every day. She's even drinking her clay water every day. And that's knitting her bones and her joints and her brain is being nourished and fed. So I look at all the issues she had and I just say, okay, this is what you can do in nature. Just like a surgeon. This is a scalpel. Also, in nature, the plants, the food, the juices, the water, the air, the mm. sunlight, all of these elements are there at our disposal to heal whatever the conditions that we're suffering from. True indeed. One, one, one of the main points that I want to take away from that, however, for our listening audience, is that mm-hmm. um, many of them are in households that are resistant to the ideas of consciousness, the lifestyle. And from what I gather from you as the conscious individual in that circle, because the circle starts with you, you bring yeah. these practices into the home and you expand outward to influence your family and other people. Is that accurate? Absolutely. That's the formula. Mm. Mm. There is a formula. And I have, you know, when I was 16, I heard in 1969 when my life turned open into this awareness. Mm. And I heard the creator has a master plan by Pharaoh Saunders. And um, that, there was a little shop, a Muslim brother had a little shop in Malcolm X and um, Angela Davis and Callie Shells and Dashikis, and he would play that music all the time. And that was the only, and I would hear the drums, you know, in the park every now and again. And that was like, oh, that was my awakening. And I, and I remember that song, and I kept that song with me all these years. And I knew that there was a plan. I, I, I said, what's this, what is the, how am I going to bring the plan? We don't have part of the plan. How am I supposed to bring the plan out? So I realized the plan that I was to bring was being written. It had been written. The, for me, the first portion of the plan was heal thyself to bring families into awareness. And then it went into take a woman as a plan for women to free women up mm. based on our ancient culture, how to overcome our psychological, emotional um, breakdown. And then, you know, then it went into um, the city of wellness and how to bring cities into wellness, from starting from the family, the core. And then it went into um, overcoming angry vagina during to rule wellness. So That's right. to stop women having unnecessary hysterectomies. I mean, that is like one of the most unnecessary surgeries that is uh, it's being, it's so constant, it's so normal. Um, but it's so unnecessary when a woman has some awareness of how to heal herself. The hysterectomies and fibroid tumors and dermoid fibroid tumors that have hair and, and teeth. So we have these entities that we're eating and it's causing these issues, which is all, you know, fibroid tumors, crystallized mucus. Mm-hmm. And the doctors, the, the, the medical um, world is trying to figure out what a fibroid tumor is, and that's what it is. And if you don't get to that, then it's crystallized mucus, then you don't know how to heal it. So you why are we getting surgery? We don't know how to heal it because you're not healing if you have an uh, organ removed. It's like you have your arm hurts you, you heal the arm, you get the circulation, you open up the valves, you clean out the blood. 
you build up the muscle, you don't cut the arm off, you don't cut the uterus off because it's infested with mucus, you purge, you wash, you cleanse, you change your diet, you shift, you let go of the anger and Mm. the hurt from relationships as you begin to bathe yourself and move and breathe and do your yoga practice and these are just so many ways in which to to prevent that because when a woman goes suffers the family will suffer the woman is the primary heel of the home that's right and the african culture has given us this affirmation it says i am the woman who lightens the darkness i have come to light the darkness it is lightened i am there for those who weep who hide their faces who sunk down they looked upon me then i am a woman I am a healer. Mm. And with that, knowing that that's who you are as a woman, then you could go right into helping your family. Now, the man, men who do this, they have the balance of the master and the feminine, and they, they bring them both together because the feminine principle represents openness, healing, mm. being in tune, mm. listening. Women, many women don't have the feminine principle. They have the masculine principle. So once you bring that into balance, then you can gather the material that you need, which is the masculine, and then you can give it to the family, which is the feminine principle, mm-hmm. working that those elements together within us, then every time we open up our eyes, we take we can take if our families are willing to higher ground. Now families are addicted. So it's not so easy just by, you know, starting out. Yes, but right. that's why you have to take one if one. And we're all the peculiar ones. You know, there's always one in every family. I know you are. I know I am. I always meet myself along the journey. In the beginning, they feel lonely. Like, oh, it's just me. They also sometimes get angry. Like, people don't understand and their family don't get them. Well, that's true because you represent the light of the family. And it's going to take time for the family to turn around towards you. They will turn around towards you once you have steadied your course. Once you have become a living testament of wellness, once you have raised your frequency to a level, like my family knows from when I was a child, I had chronic asthma, I had chronic eczema, and they said, well, to my mother, oh, she doesn't have that anymore. How did that happen? When I went outside, I would be scratching my skin off. When I went Mm. inside with the air conditioners, Mm. I couldn't breathe. So everybody knew my condition. And then when I got well, my mother said, well, that stuff that she's eating. (laughs) <laughs> but when she calls, please have a lot of watermelon for her because she's not going to do all that other stuff and have some greens. And don't cook them because she's not going to eat it. So, you right, know, the right. family started to learn a little bit of what it took for, to heal. I was an example. And so it may not, my family doesn't really get this, but they're, you know, based on the farm and the pigs and the cows, that's my family. Mm. They have their own farm, acres of that. But my extended family gets it like my clients, <laughs> my extended family <laughs> of wellness, and I help them and their families. And sometimes you have to have people on the outside coming in to assist you, to, to, to affirm what your walk is. And then the family begins to like come back and say, you know what, I learned this, and you were telling them all the time, but what happened mm-hmm. is you planted the seed. And, and that, if you want your family well, when they come to you, you won't say, I told you so. You'll just help them. You know, they, they just want help at that point. Peace. Frank, you go right ahead. Queen of Food, I know that you spoke a little bit about um, cervical cancer or the issues that we have um, as women um, with cervical cancer. And it is preventable, a preventable disease. Um, but it, however, I know that us Black women stay at the forefront of the mortality rate. And um, you spoke about um, how your book... Um, or the, I guess that's your 2010 book, Overcoming an Angry Vagina, um, discusses those types of things. Can you explain like to the listeners and myself included how, you know, that purging period that you discussed at the beginning, um, you know, where you said that it was all coming out of you. Can you um, explain how important that is in going mm-hmm. forward? Yes. Well, if you just look at, if you have congestion, and this is just a mucus journey, if you have congestion in your head and the congestion is coming from, this is how mucus is accumulated through the dairy, large amounts of dairy over the years, um, flesh foods, beef, pork, gold, and all that over the years, white flour products, white rice, white, rice, white bread, biscuits, and all of that. And lock in with the emotional challenges of relationships and finance and family and all of that. 
then there's going to be some congestion in your body. Now, where the congestion locks in, that's where we give the name of the disease. So if the congestion is in the head, the mucus accumulated and locked in the head, you have a head cold. If the congestion is in your sinus, you have sinusitis. If the congestion is in your ears, you have lost the hearing. That's mucus. If you have congestion in your throat, you have a thyroid condition, hyper hypothyroid. If you have congestion in your lungs, you have asthma or worse bronchitis or emphysema. If you have mucus congestion in your uterus, what do you have? Thyroid tumor. So then, if it's when you know when we get congestion or shortness of breath, cold, people take liquids. They take soup. They take tea. Right. They take lemon water. All those things to soften that congestion up so then you then you start blowing your nose and after a week you blow all that out and you know and it's gone, right? Well it's the same principle as above or below. You get the same congestion vaginally. And we call the that congestion a five way too, but it's the same mucus from the same dietary habits. So then you have to say, okay, since these are the foods that cause the issue, then how do I stop eating those foods and what is the alternative? So I teach, I do consultation, I do group classes, I do 21-day detox, and I give the basic information that the, the alternatives are many. Everything that you want to eat, basically, you can have on higher frequencies. So I created a chart, a frequency chart. You'll have seven pyramids. And so, for example, on the, for the tumor, on the calcium frequency, on the very bottom of that pyramid, you have the most congesting of uh, food or substances and that on the and that's your calcium level is your milk your cheese your ice cream and your eggs mm. then you have one step up and then those who are trying to overcome some of the uh, dairy they might go to soy as a transition but not to stay there because that also can cause a tumor but it may not be cancerous but it can still cause a tumor and that's why but I you're have, elevated. Yeah, I advanced from the dairy into the soy and I'm, i've kind of been hovering around the soy and the almond milks and things like that since that transition right right well you're probably ready to go to the next level now um so that means you'll have so your calcium now will be your vegetable juices mm-hmm. your green dark green juices high in calcium and minerals so will prevent arthritis aches and pain and so you, by taking that level of calcium, you repair the bones and joints. You don't ever have to worry about really old age and limping and canes and wheelchairs as you get older. Because it's what you do now in your youth that creates the body that you have as you get older. I have the same body I had when I was in my 20s. <laughs> and it's just because I've been consistently eating the same way. That's right. I, I'm looking at the pictures, <laughs> and I, I would definitely agree. I, I can see that. Yeah, I have the same energy. I have the same energy, the same stamina that I have then. It's, it's our bodies always is reproducing our optimal if we live an optimal lifestyle. Mm. So you go higher up, you have your almond milk, you have your sesame milk, you have your green juices, you have your uh, my form of the green life nutritional form of your green powders. Those are the counts. You have your turnips. You have your kale, you have your broccoli. All of these are calcium levels. When you don't cook them, the calcium is stronger. When you cook them, you take some of the nutrition, nutrition and minerals out. So that's just one area. So now if you can go up to the higher level of calcium and, and stay away from the lower frequency, then you're going to begin to break up that fibroid tumor. Mm. Then the other pyramid is the protein pyramid. These are just, I'll just name two of them. The protein pyramid, on the very bottom of the protein period, that's poor health. On all the pyramids, just, I have poor health on the bottom, then I have good or average in the mid, and then I have optimal as you go up the pyramid. Now, where can now, we find these pyramids? Um, you can check my website. You can get them. Also, I teach it in the, you can get it in the book, The City of Wellness, You're Showing Health in Seven Kitchens of Consciousness. I explain each of the items on the pyramid chart. Got it. And this came, yeah, this came out of 2005. They stopped the pyramid that went throughout the United States and out the world as a pyramid. Well, they, the Harvard University did a research on it, on the pyramid, and they found that people were getting um, diabetic conditions were rising, hypertension, um, high blood pressure from the United States government pin, a pyramid that they recommended the, the four right. food groups, which is detrimental to the health, as I break it down in the book. So in the pyramid, I'm just going to give you the flesh because that's a fibroid growing as a result of not elevating your protein. So 
So I give you the option so you can actually see how you can travel from the lower level of proteins, which will cause the tumor to cyst, the bleeding, the clotting, to higher levels. So you can go beef or go lamb from the very bottom. One step up is chicken and fish. So that's a flexitarian level. Eat it only in the middle of the day. Take off the skin, get organic. You know, so you can start to grow out of that. And then you go to the next level. This is the higher level now. You go into your beans and your peas. They call it poor man's diet. It's actually wealth diet. That's right. Because you're actually eating healthier. So you have wealth is your health. Health is your wealth. So you're eating your beans and your peas and all of that. And then you go even higher. So I get into your lentils. And you go even higher, you start getting into your seeds and your nuts, you get a raw and so. And you go even higher, you go up, and you get into your sprouts and your greens. So you now can do your shopping, and your food is now medicine. So everything that you take yes. in the body is to heal and nourish. So now with a fibroid tumor, what are the ways in which a woman can know that she has an issue with her womb and that she's about to have a tumor or she's coming out of one or she's about to get another one? Is the number of days that she has her menstrual flow. So if she bleeds mm. for um, seven days, six, seven days or more, she's, she has a, she either just got rid of the tumor, she has a tumor growing back again, or uh, she has a, uh. you know, she's living with the tumor. Then another thing is women can't go through that four, six months of pregnancy because the tumor keeps and stays with them and it pushes the fetus, the fetus out. It's, it's like the fetus is going to win because why when we get pregnant, oh, we got to eat for two. Two hamburgers, two sides of french fries, and we get not <laughs> getting sick of the tumor growing, the baby getting weak. It's a battle. It's a battle through the womb. So once you say, yeah. well, so what, do I, what does that menstrual flow mean? Once you start detoxing, doing your womb detox, your menstrual flow every 28 days will become less one day, two days less. So you'll start at seven yes. days. In the danger zone, and the next month is six days, the next month you're five, the next month you're four. The goal is to get to one, two, or three days. Any three, women yes. who, women who, one, two, or three days, menstrual flow, no PMS. No clotting, no vaginal discharge. Now you're out of harm's way. Tumor has dissolved. It has come down vastly. You're not sick. Your woman's detoxing. You're taking your, your lemons, your limes, your grapefruit, your orange, your tangerines. You're taking your green juices. You're doing your healing baths. You're doing your inversion exercises. So this is a whole lifestyle to help you heal the woman. And I, that's, the fibroid tumor is only one issue. But there are several issues that are connected to that fibroid tumor. That as you start to detox, you start to correct all of that. And I teach women 40 different, I based on the teachings of the women's room, but there's 40 issues that I teach in my training on how to overcome those issues. Does it make sense? Oh, wow. Yes, it, it definitely makes sense to me. I mean, you know, when you were talking, I was thinking of how it related, you know, to myself. And, you know, my, myself, it's, um, I, I always thought it was weird that I went, you know, for three days. I thought, you know, I should be seven days, you know, and, and oh. for you to confirm that, for you to confirm that, you know, three days is better than seven or, you know, as far as, you know, healthy womb, I'm just, I'm just sitting here like, oh, amazed, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, um, so it definitely makes you know I am so happy that this is being spoken out loud. That's right. Because yes. women don't know that, and if they don't know that, they think something's wrong yes. with them if they're not bleeding and bleeding on that level. That's in your woman's yes. health, and the doctors don't have this information. And so, yes. how do you have it? Is this, you have scientific proof? I know with a million women. I already know. I have been talking, I've been teaching, I've yes. been studying, I have been working with them. So, I know just by the experience of 45 years and just correlating the menstrual flow is one of the ways in which you can read what's the condition of your womb. And if your menstrual flow is high, you're going to have also long um, labor with your children. You're going to have issues with the children that are born. So it's not connected to the condition of your womb and that bleeding. And as below, so above, if you have womb issues, you're going to have some breast issues. So if you have womb issues, you're going to have some breast issues. You're going to have some cysts and some tumors and some lumps in your breast. And if you're having breast issues, you're having artery issues. Your arteries are clogged up. And if you're having artery issues, you're having constipation. Constipation also is another way to see what's going on with your uterus. Because the average woman, if she has three meals and men, so this is for prostate wellness. Mm -hmm. If you have yes. three meals, you should have three elimination bowel movements. If you have three meals at the end of the week, that's 21 meals, it should be 21 bowel moves. If you have one bowel move for the day, 14 meals are back up in your colon every week. Mm. That's just one yes. for the week. What happens with that waste? Some of that waste becomes like leather, stone, kidney stones, gold stones, colon stones. The colon now becomes displaced and prolapsed. It should be above the navel for a healthy prostate 
and a healthy bladder. If it is prolapse because you're not flushing out because of all the junk and the fried and the fast that you're eating and addicted to, it drops on the bladder so you have uncontrollable bladder. And then it's the colon and bladder drops on the uterus. So now you have PMS, you have pain, you have stress, and men have impotency and mm. erectile dysfunction. And it's not a fun thing. And then women, by the time she's 45 years old, her uterus is dropped down so deep so she can't have intercourse with her mate. So that's for effective marriage. And so we could just really start to detox so we can have a longevity mm. in our relationship and in our family. There are a few things that I pulled out of that conversation. Uh, first of all, you're shifting our consciousness with this discussion and with the shifting consciousness with more information comes more responsibility. So for the yes. women listening, one to three days of menstruation, no clots, yes. no PMS, or you can continue to bleed out, continue to suffer, continue to die, continue to eat these things that you know are toxic for you and suffer the consequences. And something else that uh, I was thinking about as you were talking it's amazing how wealth has always been associated with uh, food items like steak and some of the, the worst things that you can consume, whereas beans have always been associated with poverty, just like slave rations then are now called soul food today. It's sort of like the environment that we're in wants us to, uh, you know, it's a battle for our consciousness, whereas you're shifting our consciousness into a more positive, enlightening, healthy, and longevity-focused area. The environment around us, and we're going to talk a little bit about this in a second, is trying to pull us back into these negative behavior patterns. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. Well, you know, there's a lot of money in, in, in ignorance. Mm. Um, I have this, I don't have it in front of me, but if I have a, um, the body of a woman and I have price tags next to her body members. Are, are these, uh, are you, are you talking about books or you have at physically? Have I a have model? a book. I have, I, this is a training that I did. It's called Womb Wellness Practitioner Training. Okay. And Womb Wellness Practitioner it's, 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 training. It's, it's, yes, it's training. But it's going to show up in my book circles. Hopefully the book will be out for spring. That it shows up because it, I have to. So I have to show it so that we can get empowered and make the shift. So there's a, it's an image of a woman. It's soft. It's a soft touch of the woman's body. But what happens is you have these arrows and price tags. So I was one past mm -hmm. a hospital. They were, they were threatening to close out two hospitals. And, and, and that's a symbol, too. It's like a, it's a catch-22. But he lost, they were closing about to close two hospitals down 10 minutes away from me at one end. 15 minutes away from the another end. And so I thought, okay, if that's what, what, what people believe in and they go that route, when you start to say, I'm going to close down a hospital of a, a community, and, all, and both, both hospitals are closed down, where do people go? So if somebody gets shot, somebody gets wounded, somebody gets hurt, who, who's, going to, who's going to decide who's going to make it or not when people are crowded outside, they can't get in, the, somebody's going to have to fall through the dust. Mm. Somebody's going to, you know what I mean? So if, that, if that's happening, life is saying you better go home and make your hospital your home. That's right. That's what's happening. And so this conversation is to encourage, because it's, it's easy for us to even say, uh, stop doing this, but it's hard to give it up. You know, life is an addiction. Right. And, and so what I've developed is I've developed a formula to break the addiction. I know we're cracked down on this food. So okay. if you're cracked out on something, you can't stop it. I have a form of 13 herbs to go into your bloodstream and you clean out the liver, where the waste is, the kidney, the gallbladder, the spleen. All the systems get a chance to detoxify. So you say, well, detoxing, I thought it was a drug addict. Well, we're a food addict. Mm. And if you know that this food is, is actually growing this cancer or, this, or building this diabetic condition or growing this tumor or having women hemorrhage every month, it's not bleeding. It's not a... I don't even call it a menstrual flow. It's a hemorrhage. And we are told that that is normal because the, the frequency is so low. So we're looking at losing blood as a natural occurrence. But meanwhile, we're getting blood transfusions like it's a party. I have had so right. many women, everybody's talking about they just had a second blood transfusion, a first blood transfusion. I said, can you build up your blood? Can, let's, let's work on building up your blood. Not getting foreign blood. Right. Take your take your cranberries, your blueberries, your strawberries, your raspberries, your dark greens, and you'll build up your own blood, but then the mission flow will go down. But if a, if a woman doesn't really know that three days is it, 
and that's powerful, she'd be like, well, something must be wrong with me. I said, maybe I need to get some red meat. So it's, it causes a lot of confusion. But yes, well, you know, it, as I said, and, and, and what I've done is with a woman's body is I put a price tag on her breast being removed. And that, that yes, turns, I think it's like $9,000. And then there's another, then the hysterectomy made about $20,000 just for the surgery. And when I added up all her body parts, like from the breast, partial, total, um, wounds removed, pieces of it taken out, I added up to about $100,000. That's the surgery. That's not for the hospitalization. That's not staying over. That's not for the medication. And is she, is she any better? Even if she has the greatest health insurance, to have health insurance to have your toes cut off because your toes are getting black because your kidneys are failing, your butt is clogged up, that's not a good insurance. <laughs> you, your right. insurance policy is your food, it's medicine. Go shopping. You save money, you save your health, you save your life. Go shopping for healthy food from the Garden of Life, and the body will mm-hmm. restore itself. Now, that's a health insurance policy you need to invest in. Healthy whole mm-hmm. food. Set in your kitchen from a toxic fast food microwave can, frozen kitchen, and to a nutrition kitchen pharmacy. That is awakening, and that's taking on responsibility. So you're not going to be drugged out on toxic living any further. So no matter how much advertising and marketing tricks they're doing, we're not going to be biting the dust. What I looked at, I looked on this, there was a beautiful commercial. I know it was a commercial. I think it was a love, a love uh, song between a black man and a woman. I said, wow, that's so lovely, young people singing. <laughs> then all of a sudden, da 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 I said, oh, no, they did not. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> there, was a, there was another home-based mother, mother coming in late, you know, elderly mother coming in late from work, and the family's eating home-cooked food. And she tastes it and she approves of it. Da 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 da. What? <laughs> loving it again? We're not loving it. It's killing us. It's, it's killing, killing us. us. Right. It's not soft either. It's a hardcore. I don't care. Every time you eat that food, some of us are so exhausted and so tired from working because they're living toxic. It's like an endless, a, it's a, a, you know, your cycle of toxicity. So they are toxic. They'll go and they'll get the food. They're going to shop and make up big shopping bags now. That's and right. the mother comes, I got a treat for you, for the children. And one of the young men who came and worked with me and helped me write the, uh, edit the book and clean up the book, Man Heal Thyself, Journey to Optimal Wellness, how he found me. He came to New York looking for me. I said, why you had to cook? You didn't know where I was. You couldn't call me. <laughs> you have to go through all that. But anyway, he came looking for me. He ended up working with me for a year. And uh, it was wonderful. But one of the things that inspired him is because he said, with all my life, he came out in 22. He said, all my life, my mother, she was so loving to us. Mm. But she would say, what do you want tonight to eat? And she'll pick it up on her way home. You know, from one of the three fast food restaurants. Mm. And that's what they had every Friday, every Saturday. I have my next door neighbor. We, I had asthma. She had asthma. She died from that that one more pizza. That pizza is pure tea congestion. And she would That's be really there for a little ice cream truck. They would be coming and ringing the bell. And you go out and get your ice cream cone. And so you having that on your lungs. We're killing our children for a lack of knowledge. True indeed. True indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to United Black America Radio. I'm on the air with Queen of Fool. I'm Asad, your host, and I'm joined by my co-host, Frankie Rains. Queen of Fool, I do have a question. So if food is our medicine, should we Uh avoid vaccines in all modern medicine? Okay, here we go. (laughs) Well, well, you know, I I I have my own uh, stylish way of handling things with my two were young you couldn't even think about not vaccinating your children, right? But I studied and I said, wait a minute, I'm giving them uh, poison and I'm going to say this poison is going to be the protection. So that wasn't logical to me, the pus of an animal that is fermented. That wasn't logical to me. Mm. So I would, when, when there would be a fallout, I did, I, when my first child, when I woke up to that with my first child, he had one inoculation, that was it. The second child, not one. The third child, not one. And now they're all grown. <laughs> they're all in their 30s. So they got through. And they were inoculated. But you know what I did? I inoculated with them with garlic, vitamin C, 
with mm. oranges and grapefruits and tangerines. I inoculated them with green foods and green juices and salads. So when I would see there was a fallout in the school, I would pump up their lunch, lunch boxes with more sh with strong whole foods. And I would give them their nutrients and their green life formula before they went to school. And when they came back, I'd give them more. So I would bombard their bodies with wellness. So the inoculation came from the foods. And that's where it should come from. That's your real protection, your whole foods. You know, I have a, I do have a form just in case for those who want to take that journey. And it's a, you can, it's, it's the government gave us a document. I don't have a reform, but it's a document that says if you um, don't want your child to be inoculated, you just sign it off and you have it, um, uh, the seal put on it, and you can take it to most schools, most work you can get through without um, having to be inoculated. If you have the strength and courage, but you can't play with it. You can't be having your children on little french fries, little junk food, little right. hamburgers. You can't. That won't work. You might as well inoculate them because you're 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 poisoning them every day. The, the, the animals are being inoculated. That's how they get on our plate. They want them to grow full term, so they give them antibodies because they're sick. This animals are sick, and the worst time to have turkey is around this time because they are pumping up some turkey. Some turkey about to pass out. They're pumping them so heavy, and then they mm -hmm. kill them. But That's before right. that, they have to keep them back to keep them pumped up with so much chemicals to keep them alive so they will grow full term. So by the time you have one slice of that turkey, you have a heart attack, you have a stroke at the table. I can see somebody dropping their head on the plate and it's over. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And ironically, you know, the more the more medicine, the more chemicals that they use, the more they try and pump our system full of these inoc uh, what they call immunizations, inoculations, and things like that, the more disease we have. Uh, and then you see other effects that are directly tied to this. For instance, earlier today I was reading a report in preparation for this interview about six-year-olds entering puberty, six years old entering puberty, and they believe that that's a direct result of all the, the hormones and antibodies and things put into our food. Uh, Absolutely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're throwing out a lot of material, you're throw, throwing out a lot that we need to research. As a reminder to our listeners, I'm going to include links to all of these, including all of Queen of Fools' resources and books in our show notes. So if you're driving around and listening or you're in the gym, you'll still have access to all of these things we're talking about. I'm sorry, go right ahead, Queen of Fool. Mm -hmm. I, and that, and I have been seeing and noticing that um, coming, you know, into my center, coming to, like, my, across my table mm. with y children having a menstrual flow because of the high level of protein. And that high level of protein is certainly contributing to old age in children. Children are being, mm. uh, grow, are actually being born with old age diseases. They're being born with diabetes, diabetes type 2. Right. They're, being, they're, they're coming to the world with um, uh, arthritis, pain. They are, they're coming to the world with all the same issues that, old, that, that usually attack a mature person because they're, they're, they're the mothers and fathers of this generation are, are eating fast foods as a rule. And so the children are at a lower frequency at birth. They're, they're coming in sicker and sicker. Mm, mm. So we've talked about a lot. So let's start talking about some practical application, because I'm sure by now, even our listeners who wouldn't consider themselves conscious want to make some changes. They want they want to start living a more conscious lifestyle. Uh, but in today's world, again, we're under 24 hour assault, advertising, fast food, big grocery stores, money, toxic relationships. How can us new initiates experience a rebirth and start growing into this new way of life? Mm hmm. Well, um, the, for me, the simpler way to get some hands-on help, I offer four free classes, and these free classes um, are work their weight in emeralds because the free classes are connected to the formulas. You got to get the formulas. If you get the formulas, I give you that as a scholarship. The classes are the first class is uh, it's over two, uh, two hours in length. I teach healthcare and self-care. I lay out your healthy regime. I lay out the um, your liquid and solid meals. I lay out your um, tonics, your juices, your uh, internal hygiene, your healing baths, the power of vegetables, different type of juices to heal different organs and system groups. So I lay that out in that first class. I set up that, that space of your kitchen as your pharmacy. Now, do we need to be the in next, New York to go through these, or do you have telecourses? No, no, not at all. It's by Fresh. teleconference. You just you get on the call. I teach most of my, my class in different cities. Mm -hmm. So they get on the call. Only a, a few people come into the actual space. 
So that's going to be very effective for everyone, and the classes are ongoing. And then the next class is setting up your home as a wellness home, that your kitchen is a pharmacy, that your bathroom is a hydrotherapy room. You can have the most stressed-out family member, somebody about to lose their mind, and you can know what to do with that hydrotherapy room. That's water surgery. And you can just shut that energy down and get a, a, a sane home. And I give you oils and salts and uh, temperatures and localized uh, showers and baths to help to relieve organs and body systems of stress. Mm. Then you have your live-in room where your live room, your live-in room should be where you do your meditation, where you do your fitness, where you do your journaling, where you have your family strategies. That's a perfect room for that because families have to be self-sufficient. That's right. Anything can happen. Are we self-sufficient? And so that's where that room comes in. Then you have your bedroom where that you regenerate. There's an exercise that our ancestors gave to us that will bring your vitality back to you immediately, which is you lay flat on your bed and you put your three pillows lift and you let rest your legs over those three pillows. That brings the energy into the leg. So if you have swollen ankles, swollen legs, it will break that up. It helps to pull back the uterus, the prostate, pull it back up the bladder and the colon by inverting it sends oxygen to the heart so it uncalls that congested heart if you have a, if you came out of a stroke it will never happen again if you just do this exercise and it opens up the brain so the brain is clogged up and you instead of confusion or poor memory it will help to restore you so that's an inversion that you want to do every morning for 10 minutes and at night, every night at 10 minutes, and it will de-stress you. So, so that's, three pillows, that's, elevate your legs, 10 minutes. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yes. And then just start to, you know, do a, house, do a kitchen cleanse. You know, start to let go of, of the heavy meats, let go of the white flour of products and so on. You can get the books and do it that way. You can heal thyself and other longevity and get more details. Um, you can come into the training. What I offer is a 21-day detox. I call that holistic uh, first aid where you learn mm. basic training on how to live a holistic lifestyle. And so you get your formula. The 21-day kit actually covers uh, its seven formulas. It covers 102 diseases. So I don't care what's going on. The formula, each formula takes care of a multitude of issues. So, for example, the Green Life formula, these are formulas I've had out for the last 35 years. Mm -hmm. The Green Life formula helps to feed the brain, boost up the immune system, um, helps to restore the blood count. So if you're, if you're anemic, if you're stressed, it helps to repair you. You're talking um, about the, physical formulas. You're not talking about a methodology. You're talking about an actual blend no, of herbs and vegetables. Formula. Yeah, this, this is a form that's called Green Life. It's, a nutrition, it's my nutritional supplement. Okay. And gotcha. it's a wheatgrass, and it helps to repair and restore. It also creates you to have a more radiant glow about you. Then you have your mass in the kit is the master herbals, three week supply of each one bottle for each week. And that's 13 herbs for the liver detox, the kidneys. They're opening up kidney dialysis centers in our community. It used to be inside a hospital. When you have a kidney dialysis center, that means that we're really in chronic state. Probably right. you got a fast food next door to the kidney dialysis, and they work together. So you can go to McDonald's, and then when you get finished with your McDonald's, you can go next door to the dialysis center. And when you get finished with that, you can go right back to McDonald's. <laughs> it's 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 an endless cycle of madness. Then you start fighting with your family. Then you start getting, it just goes on and on. But so we get we want freedom. We're talking about cleansing, we're talking about restoring health and we're talking about more than just the food that we're eating we're talking about our emotional health our mental health our spiritual health i really want to focus on the queens for just a second uh because our queens you, you know they suffer from 400 years of pain rape incest secrets wounded wounds and your answer was the sacred woman training i really want you to go into detail a little bit about that and uh, how women can begin that process of healing Yes. Well, you know, just as what the women went through, the men went through rape, they went through abuse, That's they right. went through captivation. We've gone through it. So there is a piece in my book, Overcoming, that says, I forgive you, will you forgive me? Because mm -hmm. we can point the finger, and because when women come together, they're not happy with their relationship. They're unhappy, and many times they're in a circle complaining about it mad about it and fire each other up about it right so but we have to know that we're all coming in together in a relationship with our issues 
So rather than point a finger, then just go and do your internal transformation because you create the relationships according to where you are. That's right. So what I what I have with the sacred woman is I went back to the ancients, and the ancients showed me how to build this up in the present. How do you get something? As we we are the first of African people, first civilization known to man and woman. And we were a whole civilization was based on a feminine principle, and that feminine principle is Maat, mm, and Maat right. represents balance, truth, righteousness, reciprocity, wholeness. So that principle, she has um, wings, and her wings. When you have wings, you can elevate. So her wings, her glyph, the glyph of her body, she has arms stretched out, which are symbolic of her wings. And the very top in the center of her head is a feather. And that feather also represents a consciousness that is elevated and it's also soaring and flying. The symbol of my eye also is the scale. And the whole civilization was based on this symbol. One side of the scale is the heart. <clears throat> the other side of the scale is the feather. And it That's states right. that our heart has to become as light as a feather. You so thought, how in the world... Am I going to have a light heart if all the injustice done to me? Well, uh, which is us. Well, what happens is we have to, what divide and conquer? Supernova saw my son, Hip Hop Mesmin, says this separation is for the weak, unity is for the strong. So in the mm. separation, in separation the separation is for the weak, unity is for the strong. I'm writing that down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And in that, and when someone comes onto uh, people's land and they start to separate us because we have the tribalism, my clan, your clan. And my father was, my father's a Garveyite, so he taught me how to think and how to think for my people and how to stick with my people no matter what. True indeed. Because we always, we always find ways to separate. We have to find what's common within us. And we need each other. And the more that we can overcome these various issues that break us away from each other, the, and then we can overcome those through our healing, we can overcome. And then we can unify. So with the women, the symbol of medicine, of one of the symbols of medicine, is the symbol of Ma'at. Mm. Because Ma'at represents our relationship. So when your heart is heavy, due to your relationship with this one or that one, it's really your heart is heavy with yourself. Words can kill. A word it can be medicine. And so we examine our words and words that have been spoken to us, words that we keep saying that destroys our community, that destroys ourselves, and words that re repairs us. We talk about sacred food with the spirit of top earth, the inner guardian to protect us with our food as men. We talk about best, who with the symbol for best is the, is the feather and the knife. That's surgery. You can cut away corruptible matter. You're psychically cutting away. You're, psych you're emotionally cutting away the pain and the suffering. The more that you know yourself and the more you know that you're empowered to do that. You have sacred beauty, sacred movement, sacred space, sacred healing, the spirit of sacrament, the lion-headed healer who, can, who burns away our toxicity. Mm -hmm. And I give all the different ways of using the plants, the colors, the stones, the bath, all of in nature, all the elements to help to restore her to wholeness. Uh, we talk about sacred uh, relationship, which is the gateway of my aunt. Sacred union is us and the Getting on her seat, her throne of power. And then finally moving into Nefer tomb, out of the mud of pain and suffering comes forth the lotus. Mm -hmm. The most elevated, evolved woman to come out of a woman who's in pain. Once she begins to purify and wash, just like the plant out of the mud, and it comes to the water and it opens up at the top of the water and the sun shines upon it, no matter what it has gone through, no matter what she has gone through, she can overcome. So this training, I'm giving this training, it's a 12-week intensive training over the phone. You can come on teleconference or those who are in the, um, the um, five boroughs of where I am, they can come face-to-face -face mm -hmm. in the training. This will be in February. I also have a uh, training for the women who want to become womb wellness practitioners that is going to be happening in March, Women's History Month. And then for those women who want to get a, a, a taste of a day of wellness, it's a one-day healing retreat, which is going to be held on the 17th. And I'll start off with yoga practice. Even if you're at distance, we can do yoga. You'll pull out your mat. You'll have, we'll play the music for you, and you'll see the movements that I'm doing. 
and I'll take you through 108 poses. I have developed a mm. system called Abu and Ka'at, womb yoga dance. I will show you some of those poses and what they do to flush out whatever womb sicknesses that you have. And then we're going to go from there to the womb tonic, drinking that. And then someone will order their tonics ahead of time so they can have it in the house while I'm teaching the class on the phone and then some will be in space. And then right after those two hours of that, then we're going to go into healing the wound and some of the 40 wound issues and giving answers to whatever has happened to our wounds or through our wounds, mm. as I've shared today. And at the close, and then you'll be introduced to the 12 gateways from birthing your sacred work to birthing your time to finding your secrets and purging yourself from the painful secrets and the hidden and tapping and learning to tap into your hidden treasures. So that's January the 17th. And so we have a, a number of things coming up to help to support wherever you are in your healing mm -hmm. quest. And we're definitely going to keep up with your activities. Uh, since definitely. we're going to be posting this up in our show notes, as we come across updates, we're going to update our show notes as well. So no matter when you're listening to this, for our listeners out there, you're going to be able to get up-to-date information on all of Queen of Fools' trainings. Um, you're going to be able to get... Um, Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, Queen of Fua, we're going to give you access to our forum, our platform, so maybe one of your associates can update that as well. And uh, that way our family out there will have full access to, to everything that's going on, and they'll be able to coordinate as well. And you said this isn't just for uh, women who are located near the five boroughs. They can teleconference. They can maybe even do some video conferencing. Is that all right? Yes, absolutely. Well, it, you know, I, I, it has to be that way because I travel all the time and there's no way that I can have training just for women who are in my area and, right, and, right. or men. So, so um, it's important that I have that outreach. So definitely, no matter where you are in the world, you can join us and be a part of the healing in this way. Well, I'm thinking about it. What role should we as men play, not just in the process of healing our women, but restoring health to our relationships? I think that's a good question for the men that are listening. I talk about the five wounded men, and you might be there somewhere in that wounded man that needs healing. I talk about the, the negative alpha man, the angry old man, the sexually addicted man, the broken man, the wounded man, so that the common man. So that's an introduction into that. But from those states of hurt or wounds that maybe our father's experience is passed down to the bloodline, you get a chance to come and meet with the wellness warrior and the healing juggernaut. And then you'll, you'll start to take the journey to meet with the 12 states of man, from the family man to the sensual man to the transformative man to the lover man, the communication man, the intuitive man, the universal humanitarian man, the supreme man, the illuminated, the um, nature man, the alchemist. So these are the states of man that I have observed um, that can that men can read this and gain a lot from. And just as we're having um, sacred woman training that will be in February for 12 weeks, we're also having Man Heal Thyself training that will be on teleconference for 12 weeks. Beautiful. And we have what, from 7 to um, Wednesday, the classes are from 7 to 9. I teach the uh, women segment, and then my son and my right hand, they teach Man Heal Thyself at the same time. And then so at your 9 son Supernova is actually going to be teaching this? Well, he'll be a part of it. Then my other son, Ali Amici, will also be a okay. part of it. And then some other um, elder men will also be a, will be segued into it. And so from 9 to 10, both the men and women will come together and get a chance to have a dialogue. Because oftentimes when women just talk to women, they're going to get it one-sided. They come right. out of the train and they sit face-to-face -face with their reflection, their counterpart, and they begin to share some of the issues and they resolve it. That's right. So that so we, we definitely have something for it's a it's a family healing that has to take place. Frankie, what's going on over there? What's on your mind? Are you enjoying the interview with Queen of Fool? I am definitely, definitely enjoying it. Um, there's a lot of confirmation in what I've already known, but I like to have a, a point of reference. So she definitely um, um it gives us gives me that and I thank her for that. Um I know that we as women, you know, we do suffer in finding a partner. And as I come into consciousness, um, I've recognized the importance of having a conscious partner. Um, I know you said you bring them together um, to talk, but do you have something um, or some type of an event or service that um, caters uh, to two couples um, together? Oh, well, you know what? Everything that I've ever done, people ask me to do 
it didn't just come out of me just saying, oh, this is a great idea. And the fact that you're even asking me to have something that caters to couples, that it must be that time. But what, what, one of the things that I can <laughs> offer, <laughs> so thank you. But one of the things that okay. I, is just, I have what's called the 24 hour global fast. And I'd love for you to, do, to be a part of that. Well, we have, it's called 10, the presenters is about, it's called about 50 presenters. And it's a 24 hours. Every 10 minutes, a master of what their craft is, they come on and they give the Sermon of the Mount. I open them up. I said, this is who we have coming from this town, this city. This is their topic. Go for it. Educate us. Charge us. Give us. I said, it, what would you tell a planet that would heal the people of the planet? What do you have? What is your information? What do you bring to the table that would lift us up, that will get us correct, that will move us to higher ground? And everyone, they bring it when given that opportunity, that audience. So we're going to be doing that um, for it's the 20th of December. We do it every seasonal change. This will be the fourth one coming up. I've done it for a year. And um, so we, 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 have, we start advertising and promoting it um, the end of next week. So I want you all to be a part of it so that you can share your gifts, your knowledge. And so if you're talking, we're talking couples. We have about two couples, two or three couples that actually share on coupling, mm. on mm -hmm. um, harmonizing. Um, and so we have different healers talking from different perspectives, just various disciplines. So definitely there's a couple that will be sharing from out of New Jersey. Um, that's their whole work is bringing together couples and healing them. So we have everything in our community to heal everything that we need to heal up. So definitely that would be a blessing. But you know, with a, as, as you hear yourself as a woman, you have to sometimes we make yourself over because the couple that you were as, that couple was on one frequency. And then you start to grow. That's and right. you start to grow out of that relationship. And so now you grow into a new you. Give yourself, I always tell everybody, give yourself time to grow into your new self before you get another relationship. Oftentimes you want to end that, you know, we got out of that, okay, there's another, oh, this is a, somebody else now. Give yourself some time to meet the new you. And because what you're going to do is you're going to come in between fighting yourself and you're going to meet the same person all over again. <laughs> so that's just a, that's a word of wisdom. <laughs> Give it that's out there, same yes. relationship. Yeah, I, mean, oh I, my need, God. I needed to hear that right now as well. So words of wisdom, definitely. Yes. Queen of Four, you're more yeah. than an asset. You're more of an asset than you probably know. Well, I hope you know by now because you've impacted so many, literally thousands and thousands of lives globally. Uh, you're one of the very few real healers in our community, but we believe that every community where melanated people reside, all of these communities need their own Queen of Four. So, how can other women follow in your footsteps? You know, I read that. I read that in your paperwork. I said, "Wow, that's very profound." I, mm. the, the concept is profound because that's what I do. I'm teaching women mm. how to set up and live this lifestyle so they can be empowered um, as practitioners. I'm teaching practi uh, women to become practitioners, take women. Mm. I'm teaching women how to become practitioners of womb yoga, dance as a method of toning and repairing and restoring the uterus as opposed to having surgery around it. And I'm teaching both women and men um, the Emerald Green training that's going to be coming up in March so that we can start to have 21-day groups and, and circles in, in, our, in, our, in our communities and in our homes and in our spiritual houses. So it's really for you know, everyone to be involved. So definitely um, reach out to me. One of the things I am offering for free if for anyone who would like to get a 10-minute free tune-up, Mm. You can call us at 718-221-4325. Call us now. You know, leave a message if, it's, if the phone is busy, but 718-221-4325 for a free 10-minute tune-up with myself. You cover one question, and I know one question relates to the whole being, so I can just go right there and say, this is what you have to do. I can, for those who are really... Fast, it congested. I may do a quick energy reading, picking up the elements. Mm. And then I said, these are two or three things you can do to begin the journey. And then I'm going to tell you to ready for the next step and go get really serious, go strong, go hard, go into wellness. Then you can join me on a 7 or 21 day detox. So you can get some hands on. You don't just have to get inspired for this moment, but we can keep you moving. And so as 2015 comes in, 
you're already on your path. You're not making a New Year's resolution about the break, but you're already right. well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's right. True indeed. Queen of Fool, we are into an hour and a half. I know you committed to an hour, so thank you for sticking with us. Uh, we, we've been over here just soaking it up, absorbing the wisdom. Uh, again, you know, you've spoken to thousands of people. You've been in this for decades. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that you would like to include before we go into our closing segment? Hmm. I think you have been very subtle. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I don't want to, you know what, sometimes you talk so much to people, they're going to start going in circles. <laughs> uh, well, I just wanted to ask, I know she had spoke on the Emerald Green training. Is that correct? The name of it? Yes. The Emerald, Emerald Green, Green training. Uh, holistic practitioner training. Okay. And yes. you said that that is in March. I am so interested in that. Um, where would I find like information on signing up? If, um, well, or right now we're, uh, we're updating. I, I made a little, few little adjustments in the curriculum, so we're updating it, and that's going to start in at the end of March. So to get ready for that, you should try to do the twenty-one day detox first. That's the first level of work. Mm. So that you, I know you already do. I can hear it in your tone. You're already doing this. Oh. Oh, that's mm -hmm. so wonderful. And that was my next question. You you spoke about um, energy reading. And um, I, I, I'm interested in, in what that entails. Like, uh, Yeah, that's radionics. I teach radionics, picking up your energy field um, so that you know where the blockage is and then what to do, what correspondence is in nature that one can take to undo those blockages. So I deal, I deal with all the disease. I'll talk about 12... 12 primary diseases that I focus in on that will still meet you at the, you know, whatever the issues are. And, I, and so those 12, I base those on the elements. And so I show you, our bodies are made up of the elements, air, fire, water, earth. And when you are, right. any one of those elements are out of alignment, if they're going adverse, if they're stagnated, then we there are, there are antidotes, there are words, there are movements, there are breath. There's food, there's juices, there's ways in which you can unblock that element. When all your elements are unblocked, you have dynamic health. Mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. When any one of those elements are blocked, over long periods of time, you have chronic disease. So that, yes. everything is energy. So I can feel you. I hear your voice. I hear your text. I, I hear the questions. And so I know where you are. <laughs> I don't know. I pick up the pendulum. But that's the sensitivity we are as instruments. We are divine instruments of light, of, of the most high. And that's where the affirmation comes by. New cool, new cool. I am that I am mm. a shining yes, being, yes. in light. And that's who we really are. We are light beings with some energy and vitality. Once we nourish it, we nourish that light. We take in the light food. We think in that state, and that is our divine protection. Our, our families are being destroyed from, from a lack of light, a lack of energy, a lack of vitality. Once we get this get this goal, there's an affirmation our ancestors gave to us. That I, when I read it, I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm so grateful. I was reading the perfect when Gavin, the first written text, and it says, golden are my limbs, blue my crown, and emerald my body. That has will take me to the ends of this earth because when I think about the golden are our limbs of who we really are, that sunlight, we're the sun people. We that's radiate right. when we're whole. Blue our crown, that's the blue lotus of consciousness. We were lotus women and lotus men. That's how we started, not low life. We are we were right. at the height. And then in our body, that we are the green, we are literally the plant life. We are green plants walking in our blood so as we take in the emeralds the green from the garden we return back to our power back to our our, our divinity back to our divine protection we're getting beat up everywhere in the world people of color getting beat up everywhere in the world and it's like whoa if we the first heels of the planet don't raise our vibration we're going to continue to be slaughtered but if we raise our vibration, we will be divinely protected and charged and fortified, and we will not continue to suffer the way that we're suffering. We can end our suffering, but we've got to raise our frequency. So, yes, it is more mm -hmm. than taking a piece to the earth. Yes. <laughs> yes. And with all that heavy talk, I still have to laugh. 
we call That's it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's still a gift. That's right. That's right. It's time for us to raise our vibrations. It's time for us to join Queen Afua in her healing mission. Uh, now, we didn't talk about this, and we are in closing, but the Global City of Wellness Institute, that's located in New York. Where specifically are you located? If I did gave out the address, I'd have people outside with their cots. You would, you would, and if I could tell, if I could tell a really short story, uh, when I first moved here to Atlanta, I encountered a queen, and uh, she was traveling through the city because she was on her way to New York to consult with you, and so um, to you've influenced so many people. People will indeed uh, make a pilgrimage to the Wellness <laughs> Institute, and uh, you wouldn't get any sleep. So we're glad that but you're you know leveraging what? technology. <laughs> But I do have a vision. I have a bigger vision, and I want to have. I want to have an African ashram, an African healing ashram, where people can come for that, and they can be on the land, and they can grow their food, and they can stay those who need, and they can people can travel in and travel out, and that's so. That's one of my bigger visions. I'm holding on to that vision. I've been talking about it the last few months. I've been holding on to it for the last forty years, but now I'm talking about how so must be coming, getting closer to me. And I want it because I know people, some people can come for a day. Mm. Some people can come for an hour. Some people can call in and some people need to settle in. Mm. So I want to be able to have that available so people can be where they need to be to, to help them transform into their home. So needed. So, so pray needed. for that with me. Pray for that, that African healing ashram. Yes. Yeah. True yeah. indeed. It's, it's so needed in this day and age with all the... Uh, with all the influences that our people have to battle against, something like that would really give us the distance that we need to start generating some healing. Well, Queen of Fool, again, I know your time is valuable. You have done us a great honor. It's been our privilege to interview you. Uh, we're looking forward to, again, putting this knowledge into action. It's a, uh, it's a duty of the listeners and the members of United Black America to do so. So before I close out, I think I'm going to leave it to Frankie, my co-host, to uh, go ahead and finish us out. Frankie? Oh, okay. Um, definitely. I, um, I will be looking for the, the information for the December 20th, um, the, the global fast that, um, uh, sounds right up my alley. Um, and as yes. well as the, the Emerald green or the training, I will, um, I'm all of those I'm looking forward to in, in, in doing and working with you and, um, becoming, um, like you. Um, I feel like it, like he said, um, there was, there needs to be more out there and any way that I can, you know, uh, assist in that I plan to do, especially starting with this free 10 minute call. I'm definitely going to do that right away. And I, I mean, and any member that is listening, you know, at the sound of my voice, I, I definitely think that they should, they should call as well, because I mean, just from what you said about my energy, I mean, I, I felt like you were right on. So um, that, that moves me to want to call as soon as possible. And I thank you. I mean, I praise God for you. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate this. I'm very thrilled that you gave me the opportunity to share. And I feel it's going to go out into the world and help to lift us up. Thank you so much for your devotion, your dedication to our people. Much yes. appreciation. This concludes our interview. And so, uh, your, your, your legacy will definitely outlive you. I mean, in, in doing an interview for this show or in doing research for this interview, rather, um, I was digging back to articles that were published in the nineties, which is ancient history for some of us, excuse our youth, <laughs> uh, many, many radio shows and, uh, you're on the right path. Your work has, has more merit than you probably know. You've touched a lot of lives, including mine, including Frankie's. And uh, we're going to start our own circles of wellness right here in our homes. Mm, lovely. <laughs> That's the action plan. True, <laughs> true and Yes, circles of wellness by your home. That's mm. right. If you need anything at all, if you need any help, if you need the attention of our audience, you have it. I've spoken to a few of your associates and you have our contact information. We'll be more yes. than happy to open up the platform and do everything in our power to make your mission a success. So you definitely have us. Yes. Thank you. We're on board. Yes. We're on board with each other. That's, That's right. Happening. We're on board with each other. <laughs> thank That's you, right. Trace. I thank you both so very much. And for the listening audience, thank you so much for allowing me to come into your heart and your home. May you continue yes. to build circles of wellness. Thank you. All right. Peace family. That was today's interview. 
Uh, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. How could you not enjoy it? It's Queen of Fool. And if you indeed did, make sure you're leaving us a five-star rating on iTunes. I'll include instructions on exactly how to do that on the show notes. Also, for those of you who don't use iTunes, I've included step-by-step instructions on how you can get our podcast delivered straight to your email inbox. So this way, you can stay up on when we publish these shows. Uh, I am going to ask the family to share these shows. Make sure these episodes are circulating. Uh, If you're on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, whatever it is that you use, send these episodes to your friends and family, or at least send a link to the show notes so that they can get this information too. It could be just what they need to move into their own genesis. All right, family. Again, that's today's episode. I had a lot of fun doing it. I hope you enjoyed listening to it and got some good information. You have any suggestions on how we can make this show better? Hit me up. You know how. My contact information is on the website, all right? Peace.